The Church of the Apostolic Revival International presents Pastors and Leadership Five-Fold Conference of 2024. On Wednesday night, Apostles doing an online teaching. On Thursday night is Bishop Liston Page Jr. with guest singer Alicia Wall. Hide your hand ha, in your neighbor's hand ha, and shake it real good ha, and say, neighbor, ha, I got a word for you. Ha, God said, everything in your house just got delivered. Y'all didn't hear me. That's what God said. On Friday, we'll be having a pastor and leader session at 1 p.m. with Apostle Don Mears. On Friday night, Apostle Don Mears will be with us with guest singer, The Anointed Ones. Life. The reason you are here, the reason God still has purpose for you is because God assigned a word and that word is what held you up. That word is what protected you. That word is what kept you from breaking down and giving up. Lord, I thank you for your word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. For all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was the life and the life was the light of men and the light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. He is the word. So make sure you join us for the Pastors and Leadership Five-Fold Conference in 2024 because this is something you do not want to miss.
need you, Jesus. I can't think without you, Jesus. I can't live without you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. If you don't do it, then it won't get done. And if you don't do it, then it won't get done. We lean it on you. We depend it on you. We trust in you. We put our trust in you. We put our heart in you. We put our trust in you. There's no other name. No other name. Then Jesus. Then Jesus. And if you call that name, you call that name. He'll step right in. He'll step right in. Right in the nick of time. He'll step right in. Yes, sir. Worship him right here. Hallelujah. He's so much and more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sing to him, my, in my life. Be, glorified. be glorified, be glorified, be glorified. Sing in my life, in my life. Be, glorified. be glorified, be glorified. One more time, shout in my life. The glory out of my life, Jesus, be glorified. See in my life, be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. you 
get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You get the glory. You get the Glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you. So you get, the you get the glory. You get the, you get the praise. praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just wanna say.
Come on, can you lift your hands where you are? Can you give him the praise he deserves? Can you give him the praise he deserves? Come on, I don't hear you, Corey. He deserves the honor and the praise. Give him what he deserves. Give him what belongs to him. Hallelujah. Get the glory. You get 
Your neighbor and tell him I'm glad I can praise him at the drop of a dime. It don't take much for people who know the Lord to give him a praise. Tell somebody it don't take much for me to praise him. It don't take much. It don't take much. Hallelujah. How many of the Lord been good to? Look over and holler and somebody tell them the Lord been good to me. Tell somebody the Lord been good to me. Tell them the Lord been good to me. Come on, tell about two or three people. That needs to go through the house. Tell them the Lord been good to me. Woo, glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Sometimes that that statement can come generic. But touch your neighbor, tell them, you don't know the hell I've been through. You don't know what the Lord has brought me out of. Oh, the Lord. Oh, the Lord. Been good to say it. I dare you to say it. Say it until it means something. Say it until your mind go back to the last thing he delivered you from. Oh. God, I praise you. That's why I don't take much. For me to wave my hands. Don't take much for me to leap for joy. It don't take much. It don't take much. Oh! Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at him and ask somebody, tell him, why you praise him like that? Tell him for one thing, he saved my soul. And I know a whole lot of unsaved folks I used to run with. And I could have still been out there. But he called me by my name. <laughs> called me by my name. And I'm glad I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell somebody I'm glad he called my name. He brought me out of darkness into the marble light. Oh! Look at somebody telling him, I got another reason to praise him. Ask him, what's the other reason you have? Tell him he didn't have to let me live. Tell somebody a whole lot of other names he called somewhere else. But I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, y'all better help him. Won't y'all just help him, just help him. Y'all don't know he had multiple strokes. And the Lord brought him out of it. And he got the activity of all of his limbs.
Come on, let me hear you lift your voice like you in the Pentecostal church. Open your mouth and tell them thank you. Let the world know what Pentecost sound like. Tell them thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just tell them thank you where you are. All right, God, he's been good to us. Thank you, Jesus. And I can't put it in any form for you. You have to know for yourself that he's been good to you.
clap your hands and tell them thank you. Bless you. Kind Father, we thank you for your anointing in this place. We thank you the Spirit of the Lord is here to heal, to deliver, and to set free. Have free course in our hearts and our minds. In the precious, awesome name of Jesus, we thank you for your spirit. We bless you for how you visit us. Not only do you visit us corporately, you are with us individually. Everywhere we go, you are God not only with us, Emmanuel, God with us, but you are Jesus, God in us. And we just bless you and glorify you now, Lord. Open your understanding to us the things that concern your kingdom and your Christ. In Jesus' name, and the house says amen. Can you clap your hands and give the Lord a praise, a hand clap where you are? God bless you. Let's thank the Lord for the first lady. She is watching. She's feeling better. She's feeling better. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. And all of the saints that are watching via uh, social media, the Lord bless you. We had a good lesson on this morning. Please go back to visit the 8 o'clock session that we share with on this morning. In Jesus' name. And I tell them to make sure that they tune into these services. Amen. So nobody's missing anything. In Jesus' name that we're covered in all things. Um, we do want to reiterate some things. Um, our uh, five-fold conference meeting is starting this week. Listen, I want all of y'all to be in place. Look at it like a revival, like a, a three-day revival. Please be in place. Be in place. And in the name of the Lord, I will do a virtue on Wednesday. Just tune in to Facebook and or YouTube. And I will share with you in the privacy of your homes on that day. Praise the Lord. But please tune in. Please tune in. Those that tune into our YouTube, uh, please subscribe. Is that, what they, is that what they say to do, subscribe? All right. In Jesus' name. And uh, I see the subscription numbers going up. Praise the Lord. But please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, on and that will be at home. But please tune in. Uh, then on Thursday, amen, Bishop Liston Page will be with us. Amen. He's an awesome speaker and preacher. Praise the Lord. The man understands, if you've listened to him or heard him, he understands the ecclesia, the church, and how the church operates. He understands leadership in the church. He understands the purpose of the church. And so we just bless the Lord that he would be with us. And those of you who have experienced, that's on the uh, 18th. On the 19th. Amen. Apostle Don Mears will be with us, a powerful man of God, amen, whose apostolic gifting and ministry have made an impact on this church years ago. And so we're looking for his presence. He also is an astute and advocate, amen, uh, revelationist. He understands the word of God and understands the ecclesia, that's the church, and uh, all of the the, the structure that concerns the church. He understands structure and government, so forth and on. Things that will keep God's people going forward. Look at somebody and tell them, I am the church. <laughs> so when you say the church, don't think about a building. They're not coming to edify the building. They're coming to edify us. So these gentlemen, they will be with us. They travel a limp in the breadth of the country. And they're coming here to share with us Amen. These two powerful days. I want all leaders in place, all aspiring leaders, all of the members. You may bring people. You may bring guests. Because to the utmost, Jesus still saves. Amen. And I don't care what kind of conference it is. Amen. The doors of salvation is always open. When you bring somebody in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Uh, I don't think that I have any of announcements concerning that. Yes, Pentecost Sunday. Listen, on Pentecost, look at your neighbors and let's throw a party, y'all. May the 19th, 2024. I want you to, we were talking about uh, 
jeans, jean skirts, and jean pants, and uh, white, white uh, tennis shoes. Can y'all shout in tennis shoes? Who can shout in tennis shoes? Tell somebody I can shout on anything I put on. <laughs> I'm going to praise the Lord in it. And don't stay home if you don't wear tennis shoes. Praise the Lord. Come right on and because it's not about that. It's just that we want to represent. We want to rep Pentecost. Amen. On that day. And uh, so we bless the Lord for you in Jesus' name. All right. We're looking to have a powerful time. Make sure you invite your special guest during that time. Amen. It will be a powerful service. All right. And our anniversary is coming up in June. Praise the Lord. Thank God. It's coming up in June. And right now, I think we have all of our guests in place. They could make a flyer now. And uh, Apostle Carl will be with us. Apostle Michael Rogers will be with us. Bishop Stennett Powell will be with us. Praise the Lord. We're looking to have a good time. Bishop Stennett Powell bringing his quiet. We don't have to overwork ourselves. We're going to relax and be ministered to. This is a strategic time, saints, that we're going forward. You understand? Please understand that we're going forward. And touch a neighbor and tell them, we got to change the mindset around here. Can't do things the same way you've been doing it. If you did good, amen, to make $100, you're going to have to do better to make $1,000. And what you did to make 1000 you may have to do something totally different to go higher. So anytime you're going higher, praise the Lord, it requires that your mind is elevated to do so. I want you to get your Bibles in your hand. And I want to talk to you from a very important topic the Lord has given me. I love the word of the Lord. I have three passages of scripture I want to read from. I think I gave the audio video team two. Romans 6 and 14. Romans 7 and 14. And then we want to go to Galatians 3 and 23 through 26. When you get that, would you rest to your feet? They may have uh, some of this on the screen. Screen. Um, I must also say that in this message, I know that some of it is going to address some of our Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters concerning this subject matter. And pray hopefully that you are empowered and strengthened by what you're hearing. Look at your neighbor and tell them you need to make sure that you are in the faith. <laughs> yes, you need to make sure that you're in the faith and able to give an answer Praise the Lord to those who are in doubt about the hope of glory that's within us. Romans chapter 6. Let's thank God for our assistant pastor, the person of Pastor Robert Wild Bill Pickett. And to Pastor Moore, Pastor Gregory Moore, and to Pastor Brian Spann. Let's thank God for our pastors, y'all. Come on. Thank the Lord for our elders, elder. Amen. Dixon, praise the Lord. Elder Allums, Evangelist Holmes, Evangelist Italy, Minister Jay, who just had a newborn baby. Young man, keep on doing what you're doing. Don't turn to the right or the left. Just go on a, on a street called straight. Keep going straight. God got some great things in store for you. And here it is, Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, 
For you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, Romans, the seventh chapter. Romans 7 and 14, when you get it, would you say amen? It reads like this. For we know that the law is spiritual, he says, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 23. To get that, what you say, amen. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto, unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. I want you to turn to somebody and say, implosive intentions. Yeah, tell somebody else, implosive intentions. I want you to take your seat in Jesus' name. Implosive intentions. Before we get into the text, let me take this time to vindicate the Lord in lieu of this message. Our reason and intellect is far from the understanding of the entire purpose of God. And what he knows in entirety, we learn in piecemeal meaning that we come to know over a period of time and still far behind. I must remind you <clears throat> that his ways are not our ways. Neither is his thoughts our thoughts. The Lord said, as the heavens are above the earth, so my thoughts and ways are above your thoughts and ways. The bottom line is that there are times that God will do things and say things opposite to our orthodoxy. This is our normal way of life, our normal way of thinking. It is referred to as a paradox. So the paradoxy of the Most High says that the way up is down. But our orthodoxy says the way up is up. Touch your neighbor telling you to got there a lot faster if you'd have humbled yourself. Now it's taking you 50 years to get somewhere and you want to blame it on the church. Touch a neighbor and tell them, don't blame your failure on nobody but yourself. And you wasting time to do what God said to do. Now I'm not talking about God sending you nowhere. I'm talking about God talking to you. And God dealing with your character. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. People only hear God when he talks sending them somewhere. God ain't sending you nowhere but to a seat to sit down. And to hear what the Lord is saying and to digest what he's trying to convey to you. While men say the way, uh, praise the Lord, to be promoted is through pump and circumstances, God's paradox, he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. I dare you to look at somebody and tell them don't miss your due time. <laughs> tell them, so stop worrying about your time coming and say, I want my due time. When what is due to me is given to me in the right or proper time. Praise the Lord. And so I want you to understand. The Lord says, 
Amen. While human orthodoxy says to hate your enemy, God's paradoxy says to pray for your enemies and to love those and pray for those who despitefully use you. I mean, they meant to use you. They meant to get over on you. Said to pray for them. Just touch somebody and say, I'm praying for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. It appears, though, that the natural mind says, why should I love my enemy? Why am I praying for somebody that's trying to destroy me? If the way up is up, why won't I just, just go on up? In order to get up, why don't I just go up? That's the mind. So listen, but God is saying opposite of these things. And it appears as though God is setting you up for failure. Listen, listen say, touch a neighbor and tell him, in plosive intentions, he meant to set you up. He meant to set you up. Now, this is going to blow your mind, so you've got to listen to what I'm saying to you. Some of you failing, and you saying, this is not God's will for anybody to fail. Well, um, sometimes God let it fail. He let certain things fail, and it looked like it's a setup. That's what it looks like. It looked like God is setting you up for failure. But in all reality, he's setting you up for success. God is in charge and perfectly knows well what he's doing. Tell somebody, God knows what he is doing. And tell somebody around you the last test should have taught you to trust him. I, I don't have nobody in here. 